Hey, what's up? This is Václav. There has been a change in the weather forecast that came in the September Home Assistant release. For the regular users, this probably doesn't mean anything, as I will show you. But on this channel, I discuss rather advanced topics. So it might mean that some of us will need to make some changes during the next six months. This change builds on the recent introduction of the service call Return Values. Also, it triggered an addition of the action parameter to the template sensor, and this is quite exciting. I think it's quite useful in general. In a nutshell, they are moving the forecast from an attribute to a service call. The great thing about that is that uh, you can say what type of weather forecast you want it when you ask for it. So you can have a daily, hourly, twice daily, and uh, you can ask multiple types of forecast to the same weather entity. Also, you should also get the latest forecast when you need it. The forecast attribute is now deprecated and it will be removed six months from now. The reasons for that are simple. Uh, many of the weather forecast services have a limitation of number of queries. These are API calls. And you might sometimes need different forecast types for different uses. What the weather entity does, it regularly updates the weather forecasts all the time, even when you don't need it. And then when you need it, because there is this uh, limit on the number of requests, you might end up with some old, outdated forecast. And with the service call, you can ask for the forecast only when you need it, and you will always get the latest one. Also, it is uh, part of the general guideline to replace a very large attributes with service call. So, the weather entity has been updated. So, when you open it, it will on the background get the weather forecast seamlessly. So, for the general user, you won't even notice anything, nothing changes. You can even show different forecast types within the same entity, which was not possible before. You had to pick one forecast type when adding it, and when you needed both, it was not possible. Yeah, you could create two different weather entities with a different forecast type, and uh, but when they were both updating simultaneously, it could cause issues. I configured that for the Metno integration, and I managed to configure that through the YAML configuration in the past, but recently in the current integration, through the um, graphical user interface, it didn't allow this configuration anymore. But since I migrated that from the YAML config, it's still there. But I can't recreate that anymore. I tried to create that with the open weather map, and uh, it didn't allow me to create a second entity either. It says the weather for this location already exists. And I think that they knew why they do that. Uh, each forecast needs to make a separate request and when they were uh, getting multiple requests in parallel they were getting too many request errors. So now we can actually get multiple forecast types for the same entity which is something we couldn't do before so this is great. But there may be few situations where this might be a little bit more complicated. For example when you use the weather forecast as a trigger in some automations or when you want to show it in some kind of external display all the time, or dashboard on the wall. And I actually use some of that. So let's see what we can do with that. I will address two scenarios, one on demand and the second one for the permanent display. So first, on demand. I have an automation for smart irrigation. It uses a combination of precipitation in the last two days and uh, I use the actual rain sensor for that. Uh, you might also use a soil moisture sensor, which would make probably more sense. I tried that, but for some reason I don't use that. That's a topic for other video. So what it does is this uh, blocks the irrigation if uh, it's been raining uh, recently. But also I want to block the irrigation if it will start raining in, in the next few hours. And for that, I use the weather forecast. So uh, let's dig in. I'm going to open the automation and search for the irrigation control. And uh, this is it. So it's triggered by the calendar. When it changes to on, uh, then it will start the automation. And then there are a couple of conditions. 
First is I'm checking whether the irrigation master switch is on. Uh, otherwise I'm going to just end and not irrigate. Then I'm also checking whether I didn't run the irrigation manually from the box in the garden. And then uh, I check the precipitation. Uh, the first two are uh, for the actual uh, rain sensor and uh, there are two, you might call it over engineered, but the basic idea is I'm checking that uh, it was not raining a little bit but steadily over last three days, kind of a light drizzle but consistent. Uh, so that's the first condition and the second condition is I'm checking whether it was not raining a little bit more during uh, yesterday during the last day uh, I started irrigation at 3 a.m. so I'm basically checking whether it wasn't raining the day before and the last one is the one using the forecast so I'm checking whether there's not gonna be any uh, forecasted rain during today and if there is I'm going to and uh, this uh, automation as well. And if all of those conditions are met, then I'm going to call the service, uh, start the full cycle uh, and uh, make entry in the logbook so I know that the garden has been irrigated uh, by looking at the home assistant. So if you look at that in the YAML, might be a bit easier. Uh, these, this is the trigger from the calendar. These are all the conditions. The first conditions are input boolean states. And then I have those conditions from the rain sensor. There are basic numeric state sensors. And then I have the one we're going to be changing today. And this is a template sensor. And I'm looking at the weather home forecast the first entry in the array precipitation and I want it to be less than five. So we will need to change that today. And when I do that, I like to always uh, test it in my developer tools. So let's do that. Let's open the entity and uh, there is the attribute forecast and we're looking at the first item in the list. So this is the item with the index zero and uh, this is how it looks like and I'm looking at the precipitation uh, attribute from there. And we want to replace it with the service call. So let's, uh, let's see how it looks. I'm going to go to service and here I'm going to go for weather get forecast. I'm going to select the same entity and I'm going to say I'd like to have a daily and call the service and this is the response and as you can see the response is essentially the same as the attribute in here. So we could pretty much leave um, the automation the way it is. Uh, the only difference is we will need to make a call to the service call and then make the condition after that and replace uh, the attribute uh, with the uh, service call or response. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to go uh, back to the automation then to make our life easier uh, I will actually copy uh, the template because I said I'm gonna pretty much use the same one so I'm gonna reuse it but then I'm gonna uh, add an action to call a service and the service is gonna be uh, get for a cast from the forecast home and it's going to be daily and the response variable I'm going to call it the response and then after this service call I'm going to create a template condition and uh, this is going to be template and in here I'm going to paste the uh, previous template but I'm going to replace this first part so the state attribute weather home forecast I'm going to replace with the variable response for a cast and the rest should be the same. So uh, let's open it in YAML to do some final changes. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take this and move it forward. So we're calling the get for a cast service call to get the response. Then I'm checking whether the response for a cast zero precipitation is less than five and then I'm continuing with the service and I'm actually gonna take this alias from here and I'm going to move it to the condition as well so I know what it is. And I can uh, remove this part now that we are done. So I'm going to save it and then we can test it. Um, before testing it, I'm going to actually disable uh, those two actions because I don't want to actually start the irrigation. I just want to check whether the condition works. 
and uh, from there I'm gonna just say uh, run and I can go to trace and uh, see what it did so this is the service call and the next step is the condition and as you can see the uh, condition is true the condition has passed I can check the changed variable so this is the response and it has a value for a cast with this array so this is what has been uh, checked so this condition has passed and it continued to the service calls which are currently disabled so it didn't hopefully start the irrigation so that worked so we're done so we can enable now uh, those two actions and uh, save it again and we can call it quit and the great thing about it is i know that it will always get the latest forecast during the automation so the value will be uh, up to date then the second scenario the display some of you might remember that i have the weather station with the it uh, touch screen i made a video about that and uh, one it shows a couple of uh, forecast values there is a minimal and maximal temperature till the end of the day and also show the precipitation forecast uh, so i know that i should take an umbrella when going out and uh, here i have two options i can either take the uh, daily forecast and just simply show it or i like to actually do things a little bit uh, more smart i like to calculate it from the hourly values because in the afternoon i might want to see the values for the rest of the day and perhaps through the night without the values from the morning i don't care about those anymore this is already passed but the display updates every few seconds and calling a service each time it will make no sense so uh, what we're going to do for that is we are going to create a template sensor we can control how often it shall update and on each update we will use the new action parameter to call the service and use the response to update the value so in a way we are recreating the way the deprecated weather entity worked but this time we know why we do that we do that on purpose because we know we need that and we have full control over when and how often this is updated and obviously we should check the api documentation and make sure that we stay within the allowed number of requests per day or per hour so let's dig in uh, for the displays i'm using those uh, three template sensors uh, for the minimum temperature maximum temperature and the precipitation and uh, i'm manually iterating through the weather hourly forecast attribute and i'm not gonna dig in the reasons why i'm doing it this way uh, i'm gonna just uh, trying to replace uh, this attribute with the service call and i'm not gonna reinvent the wheel because uh, quite conveniently the documentation for the sensor template in the home assistant contains very nice example i'm gonna just steal it from there and then i'm gonna go back uh, to my template sensor so i'm going to uh, create a new sensor uh, i think the word template is there twice i'm gonna remove that and uh, we get a complaint that the property action isn't allowed uh, because this is a new property and vs code hasn't been updated yet uh, so this is fine this is false warning and uh, i'd like to uh, trigger it once per hour so this is fine and uh, i'd like to get the hourly forecast from weather home so this is actually fine as well and i like to get hourly forecast so everything is cool and then what i like to do is i like to take those three uh, sensors i'm gonna just copy it from there and i move them in here and uh, and so the only difference is instead of the state attribute forecast I'm going to replace it with the hourly dot for a cast and I'm gonna do that for the rest of the uh, template so I'm gonna just replace this by that there are four of those one two three four so I can replace all and uh, we are done so let's save it I'm going to go to my developer tools and I'm going to reload the templates and then let's go to the states and check the results now first I left the example in so I should have a new sensor that's called weather forecast hourly 
and it should have the uh, current time when it was updated and uh, the forecast attribute in there so that works and then I should have the sensor today minimum maximum and the precipitation for today and they're all in so this is the maximum temperature minimum temperature and the precipitation and I've used the same entity name so I don't think I need to change anything else I think it'd be a good idea just to check whether I'm using those uh, anywhere else so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna open the studio code and I'm going to uh, search for weather to see whether I'm referring anywhere to the uh, weather forecast and uh, the only place it uh, find was in this weather yaml package which we uh, just fixed so that's fine and I could probably do the same in the automation and it only found it once and this was uh, as part of our get forecast service which is the automation we have created earlier so we're fine and life can go on now as always I'd like to welcome you to leave comments down below said that I have noticed that some users got quite passionate about this topic and uh, there's been even a petition to remove this and uh, I, I didn't really make this video to create a platform for flame wars all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to understand the reasons find some positives and show you the way forward how to deal with that so please leave your comments but leave it constructive the hate comments will not help anyone so that's been it today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.